my name is Constantino. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, thank you for coming along. If you're not new and you've been here for a while, thank you for continuing to come back and watch these videos. Of course, these videos are where we go behind the scenes. We take a look at, well, performances from my TV specials, look at just everyday TV performances that I have done. We look at my stunts, my demonstrations. We kind of pull back the velvet curtain and let you into what takes place because you don't always get all the information. And now we get this opportunity, this platform to share it with you. So with that being said, you want to subscribe, you want to turn on the notifications, and let's get started. Okay, so today we're taking a look at a piece that I call Dropped My Original Creation. The concept, the idea behind this is the following. I was placed inside, well, a Perspex bubble, handcuffed, chained, locked, secured, and dropped 10 meters under the water. My job was to hold my breath and pick my way through all of the locks, free myself from the contraption and swim to the very, very top. That was the idea behind it. Now, being 10 meters deep on a two minute, two and a half minute breath hold is equivalent to about five minutes. Now, it's not five minutes being still, lying flat on a couch, holding your breath or uh, on your bed. This is five minutes with movement. So if you wanna know what that it feels like, Take a deep breath, hold it for five minutes, and go for a jog. <laughs> That's literally what it's like, but with pressure also placed on you. So it's not just like holding uh, your breath now, it, it's like this absolute excruciating pressure. So that was the concept behind it. Now, it was for my television special, The Magic, The Mystery, The Madness. This was a three-part series, and this would be the first stunt in that series. So pretty big, pretty dramatic. These demonstrations take about six months to prep, design, come up with the idea, build the contraption, train for it, etc. I only had two weeks to physically prep. Now, it took more time to build the contraption and get all the restraints ready, but only two weeks to physically and mentally get prepared. And that's why things kind of went a little bit south. I'm not gonna say too much because the video will explain it all. What I can tell you is that after it went wrong, I had to go back to the network and explain to them that we didn't have an ending to the first uh, TV special in this series. And they weren't very happy because they'd spent between 70 to to $100,000. It's a lot of money. In TV, you know, people spend a million dollars per episode on a TV show. But this this was, um, to them, quite a bit of money. It is quite a bit of money. And I now had to kind of salvage what was going to happen, what we're going to do. They weren't very pleased with me. So for people out there who say, oh, this is very dramatic and it's all put on, uh, yeah, you can say that except you don't go and just throw away $100,000 um, to be dramatic. So this really took place, this really happened. And when it all went a bit pear-shaped, I had to cancel. Um, you'll find out what happened, but I had to cancel my shows because I couldn't get on an airplane. I had to cancel different gigs because I wasn't fit to perform. So this, is a, this, was, this was the real deal here, and I was extremely disappointed. But I'll let the video speak for itself, and we'll see how it goes, here we go. Wait until you see this location. Unbelievable. Both my brothers there. Guys, here we go. One year in the planning. And he's gonna get in this. <laughs> Dropped is by far my most dangerous stunt ever. The last stunt he did, which was breathless. Now, I thought that was dangerous. One that he's come up with now, this stunt here is just, it's off the hook. And then we'll get him up there and drag him in there. Well, let's do it. Benny, you ready? Nice and controlled. Yeah. Going up. Nice and slow. Watch the wall. After being hoisted into the air, I'll then be dropped into this cylinder of water. I have to pick through all these locks, swim to the surface, all on one single breath. This is, we said 10 metres deep, right? Yeah, 10 metres deep. That's double like... the atmosphere of pressure down there. I've actually dived down there recently and tell you what. It's pretty scary. Four metres above the ground, six metres below. See, that is so deep. I mean, I can't even see the bottom. In 20 years of owning dive shops, this is one of the most insane things I've ever seen. There's no axis. From the sides, there's no axis from below. This is full on. As underwater escapes go, this is the most difficult thing I think anyone has ever performed anywhere around the world. 
there's lots of training involved. The first thing I do is a dry test. Basically, I go through the whole escape, execute it with no water inside. Once my locks are secured, I'll work on my wrist cuffs to free my hands, then down to the padlock on my waist chain, then my ankle manacles, and finally, I reach up to the grill to undo the padlock. Once I actually take the lock off the grill, I'm not free. I still have to swim six, seven, eight meters to the top before I take my first breath. If I'm to have any chance of making this escape, then breath control will be critical. So I've been training with a diving expert for the last four months. So as you go down, you have to equalize your ears as well. The important thing is he's got to try and stay relaxed. The higher your heart rate is, the more oxygen you're going to use and the less length you're going to get out of your breath hold. This one they said is very difficult. The water's rising. The fact that I'm dropping very, very quickly. I have to equalize. There's a lot of pressure on my lungs, a lot of pressure on my actual face. And it's very difficult in that situation to actually hold your breath. The big issue I see with this one is that there's only one way out. If you can't get the, the grate open at the top, this failure in this one is not going to be very pretty. It's good, cause how you feel? Yeah, good. And I don't think people at home understand the dangers in this. Like when you put someone in a container, and then you lock the container, and then you drop it in the water, there's so many things that can go wrong. The danger here is very real. We can't get to him. We can't even see him. We have a video camera to see what he's actually doing, which is. We've never done that before. This really is like an underwater prison cell. It's really complete sensory deprivation. I'm constantly looking at this brick wall. Mm. It throws up a couple of issues for the filming. We can't actually have divers on cameras. So what we're actually doing is we're covering the sphere in like 16 GoPros, underwater cameras, that will capture my every move. Uh, angle up a bit. So there's really nowhere to hide at all. Yeah, it's good. They're real locks, they're real chains. I am really pushing my body to the limit. I know physically I can do it. I've mentally got to be calm. How can you be calm when you're being dropped and sunk to the bottom of this drain? It's a couple of hours before 300 people arrive to witness my most dangerous escape to date. So we've decided to have a final rehearsal to test the underwater cameras. What happened next absolutely terrified me. The vision you're about to see was never intended to be broadcast. Everything was going according to plan. Everything was cool, ready to go. We were all excited because we were going to test this for the first time. Took my last breath. What happened next was terrifying. Straight away, I felt my ears, or the pressure actually on my head was excruciating, even at about a metre, metre and a half. So I tried to equalise by blowing through my nose, clearing my ears, and I couldn't actually equalise, and I tried to equalise again. I realised that this doesn't seem right. I mean, he doesn't normally do this, and so I quickly sort of jumped in the water. I wanted to get down there, wanted to see his face and see if he was OK. Things were bad. I had never felt so much pain in my head, and I realised at that point that I still had five locks to get through. And it was weird. As I, as I jumped down and descended quickly, I realised he was in this like a trance. He didn't really notice me, he didn't see me at all. For the first time in my life, I was executing an escape that was going very bad, very quickly. Eventually, at about five and a half, six metres, I equalised. I felt a pop. It felt like someone was punching me in the right ear. I was in a fight for my life, picking my way through the locks, slowly pushing the grill out, realising then, at that particular point, I still had to swim six metres to the top. I almost thought it was the end. I was popped up and my first instinct was, OK, he's actually done the escape. But then I could see in his face that something was wrong. You OK? Yeah. You heard me, did you? Yeah, bad. You tell. When I pulled back his hair and saw his blood in his ear, I was very, very concerned. In a scuba diving environment, bleeding is something that's not common at all and very serious. Felt it go. You felt it go, did you? I could tell you were in pain. I've never seen disappointment in Cos's eyes like I saw that night. He was really, really shattered. I mean, I was devastated. I knew at that point that the stunt would have to be postponed, possibly cancelled, and it all falls back on me. The injury is very serious. I've burst vessels in my right ear. I have blood throughout my left ear as well. To, to actually go through all that pain, 
to actually still get his way out of the sphere and, and escape is just amazing to me. Everyone is saying that the escape was a success, but John was in the tank and technically that's a safety. So for me, that escape doesn't count. Keep coming, Ben. It's definitely gut-wrenching having to come back, pack up the sphere, and that's it, the party's over. Pack up, go home, finished. Put it in. He hasn't had a setback like this before in any of his career. It's gonna take a bit of time to get over. The funny thing is I'm actually more motivated now. So what I'm going to do now is take that sphere, I'm gonna hang it in my studio, and I'm gonna look at it every single morning. It's now my, my arch nemesis. Believe me, this is not the end of Dropped. Okay, so the stunt went wrong. You know now what happened, I ruptured my eardrum. So basically, that was it. That, that's, that was the, the end of the stunt. I would never go back and redo it again. However, I was kind of planning and orchestrating a way to try and be able to do it again. Now, as you know, these things cost a lot of money. So I convinced Channel 7 the Sunday night program, because every program has their own budget to do this stunt, to do it again, but this time they wanted to do it live, which of course is very difficult to do because last time it went wrong and that was a pre-record and now I was going to do it in front of 300 people live. If it goes wrong, they don't have a TV show. But I was going to train for this one, spend you know six months really prepping for it, four weeks, a full month, literally, every single day in that tank. I mean, every day for a month just in that tank, um, prepping for it, breath holding technique, uh, fitness, mentally getting prepared for it. And the Sunday night program basically did a special on me, a backstory on me, and now you're about to see the stunt taking place live on Australian TV. Um, kind of rare that this doesn't really happen. So let's check that out right now. And right now in Melbourne, Cosentino is being shackled for that dangerous escape. He's inside a solid sphere which will shortly be hoisted and then lowered seven metres into a tank of water. As you can see, Cos is about to shackle himself with two handcuffs, two leg irons and four padlocks. Once under the water, he'll have to escape all of those locks on a single breath. When we come back, the escape begins. Don't go away. Call it magic. Well, it's crunch time for Cosentino and for you, some of the most nail-biting live television ever. Cosentino has been hoisted, locked and shackled in his perspex sphere into a huge tank of water 10 metres deep. He's now about to prepare himself mentally and begin his breathing exercises for his greatest ever escape. Watching on are PJ Madam and Cosentino's brother, John. Here you go, John. Um, you're suited up, ready to go. Mm, dare I say, if uh, anything goes wrong, I'm ready to jump in. John, dare I ask, what is plan B for tonight? Plan B is potentially a 10 metre descent. Drop down there, use these keys to free him from the restraints and bring him up to the surface. It's, uh, it would take minutes and it's be very messy. Just how important is the setup? Obviously we're whispering. It's absolutely critical. What he's doing now, he's trying to use his abdominal muscles to expel all the carbon dioxide and inhale as much oxygen as he can. You can see that his eyes are closed. He's trying to sort of relax, not be stressed, and lower his heart rate. We have to remember these are real chains, real padlocks, real handcuffs. I mean, for a magician, there's no magic tonight. <laughs> Absolutely, there's no smoke and mirrors here. This, uh, this is as real as it gets. I sometimes think that folks at home don't realise how dangerous and challenging this stunt is. You know, there was a real reason last time while it almost ended in disaster. We've been training for about four weeks for this intense training, mentally, physically, and technically we're ready, but we can't be complacent. 
I can spend four weeks in that tank every day training for it. Let alone the prep beforehand. It's getting ready. Now I won't go until I feel 100% comfortable. You see my fingers, which will mean when I put my finger up, I want one more breath. So we'll wait for that. And this is all in real time. This is how it is. Yep, there we go, first finger. Okay, now I'm really focusing, really purging. I'm trying to lower my heart rate under 50 beats per minute. Okay, so I should go. Four weeks of training for two minutes of work. Training. Here we go. Here we go. The clock has started, but Cosentino attempting dropped for the second time. Here we go. I want to get that handcuff off as quickly as possible. So he seems to be, yeah, I can just see him working on the handcuffs right now. Get that off quickly. 15 seconds per cuff, round about that. We're counting back from two minutes. So that's already so that's 20 seconds. The time that we hope he'll be up. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. For a two minute. I've just seen him do his first equalisation. Last time we had a lot of trouble with uh, equalisation, the pressure on his ears, you know, he perforated his drum and had bleeding. That should be off by now, that cough. That's okay. Okay. We're around about three meters. There's Priscilla. Through the porthole there, that means that they're getting to the four meter mark. Four meters, yeah, there you four go. Meter mark. That's when I trumped in last time. Uh, I was very concerned. I've seen him now. He looks reasonably comfortable. Yeah, just over a minute. Just over a minute. Now the pool, you know, there's a lot of pressure, it's 10 metres deep. It's double the atmospheric pressure down there. Your air spaces in your lungs and stuff are really compressed. Uh, you know, a two minute breath hold at that depth is equivalent to about a four minute breath hold. You can see that he's trying to keep his torso as straight as possible. Focus. Exactly. Not lean forwards too much. Trying to be as efficient as possible. And John's right. Minimum movements. We have to remember that just because he's out of the locks doesn't necessarily mean he's safe. No, absolutely. We're coming up to now close to the two-minute mark. We are close to the two-minute mark. Okay. Got the belly chain. This is good, but John, we're behind. Yeah. I'm Okay, that's two minutes. You know, I'm definitely not as happy as I'd like to be. Uh, so you can see he's on the last lock. Come on, come on, Cos. This is when he's this is when he's really burning. Okay, come on. These lungs must be begging him to take a breath right now. That's it. I'm not, I'm okay, not really happy. We Adam. Come on, Cos. Big swim. Come on, Cos. He's done it. A five minute hold with movement. Blessed to have such great fans. Our parents. Cosentino finally defeats the incredible act of escapology that defeated him last year. Victory for Costantino. We're back in a moment. All right, so there you have it. Very raw, very live, very difficult. You can see I'm relieved at the end. Thankful that I got to do it again. The apparatus, the dropped prop, does hang in my museum, but now I can look at it and know that I accomplished it. Uh, very blessed to have such great fans, so many of them that I know and recognize uh, personally now have been to so many of my shows. And um, 
you know, I, I was so exhilarated to be able to accomplish that and pull it off. You can see at the end though, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just relieved that I, I overcame the gremlins because it's very difficult when something goes wrong, you have a fear and that can really play on your mind. So I was going back a year later to accomplish something that went drastically wrong financially, emotionally, um, from an ego perspective. And now this was all live, which is added pressure. And we pulled it off. My, my family, my team, my brothers around me, uh, my, my fiance, girlfriend at the time. So really, really pleased I got to do that. And very rare to see something like that on Australian primetime TV. I don't know how often something like that's been done in this country. I know no Australian magicians have done TV specials. I'm, I'm not sure about this. Someone will have to let me know this type of escape. Uh, I'm not really sure if that's happened on a primetime show, to be honest. Um, so pretty cool. I know I did something earlier uh, in 2010 on a morning show, but not, not prime like that. Um, so once again, a little bit of history there. And now you get to see the whole package. You get to see how it went wrong. You get to see why I wanted to go back and redo it. And then you can see that raw footage. So really, really cool to go back and look at that. And that took place, the second version took place in 2014. So once again, thank you guys for watching these videos. I hope you're enjoying the behind the scenes commentary on what takes place and what happened and uh, all, all, all that goes into it. So if you're enjoying, subscribe, turn on notifications, let people know. But until next time, be safe, look after one another and remember to always believe.